One in 10 women suffers from this. We're talking about abdominal pain, back pain, all kinds of pain. And what the problem is, is that when women talk about this, oftentimes they're dismissed. Exactly. What we're talking about is endometriosis and pelvic pain. And here's the thing. We know that there are great solutions out there and we want to give those to you so you don't have to suffer in pain anymore. And this is Chick, Chick to Chick. Chick. So many women talk about they have this pain in their pelvis, they have yeah. this abdominal pain, they're doubled over in pain, and then they get dismissed. Now, I've never experienced anything no, like this. Either. I've never mm -hmm. had endometriosis. I did have fibroid tumors, and although the two are not the same, I understand that the pain is the same, yeah. and I can tell you, it was not pretty. It's very, very painful, and I think the hard part is because you can't see it, you can't see that somebody, when they're hurting on the inside, I think women oftentimes get dismissed when they talk about this. Well, of course, and I think a lot of women, when they're chit-chatting with their friends, um, you know, and you pass back those stories of, oh, I had a bad period, and oh, I have this cramping, and it seems to be a universal of, it's just what we go through every single month. And some women, it kind of waxes and wanes, as I've learned with other friends that I didn't know have these issues. And it is really sad because I don't think women are heard and they're not listened to. And that is a big problem. It's gonna be changed, it I know it It is well. a big problem. And the thing is, you don't have to live like this. There is a solution. And we're talking about that today with Dr. Gerald Harkins. He is here from Penn State Health. Hi, doctor, thanks for joining us. Happy to have you, thank you. Happy. Doctor, what is endometriosis? So endometriosis is when the, the glands that are normally in the uterus, the endometrium, what a woman has her period, she sheds. When those glands actually grow outside the uterus, so they, they grow attached to the uterus, to the pelvis, uh, to other parts of the ovaries, other places in the abdomen or the pelvis, they grow and they cause inflammation and pain. And so when women are experiencing all of these issues, um, how, how do they know? I mean, is there an actual test? What is the way a doctor can determine that it's actual endometriosis? So, so unfortunately, there, there isn't a test. There isn't a specific blood test or outside test. You know, we talk to women about how they perceive their symptoms. So um, if your periods are beyond what you think would be normal for you, and some of the telltale signs are what you had mentioned, that they might be missing school, they might be missing work, they miss social activities. Their periods are so bad that they may keep them uh, away from their activities of daily living. How each woman perceives that is obviously very personal. And that's part of what we, we talk about in our education is giving permission to women to, to voice some of those concerns, uh, for sure. Unfortunately, for endometriosis, there is no external test, as we said. You can, you can surmise it just from hearing women tell their story. And it's always been talked about that if women tell the story and you listen well and correctly that you'll be right 95% of the time if you just give the women the permission to, to tell their story correctly. And I like that I you're listening to what they have to say yeah. because I think as women sometimes we're afraid to speak up because we're dismissed. Right. And I think the key is here is listening. So you talked about this growing on uh, the outside of the uterus. What causes endometriosis? So there are a couple of theories. Each of one has some support. One is that when you have your period, some of the tissue goes backwards. It's called retrograde menstruation. So some of the period blood comes out through the cervix and the vagina. Some of it comes out through the fallopian tubes, which is backward menstruation. And those cells, when they land inside the abdomen and the pelvis, they'll actually grow there. And the real issue is how your body deals with, um, deals with that growth. Every woman has a little bit of retrograde menstruation. Some women, their body, their immune system will cause the body to attack those cells. Now, there are types of endometriosis that actually grow spontaneously, uh, probably from stem cells, uh, from the progenitor cells that are from the female reproductive organs, uh, from where your uterus and your fallopian tubes and your ovaries were developing. Those stem cells can be induced to become endometriosis in places that are remote from where you would have your menstruation. So my question, you keep talking about maybe they're at school or they bring their mom in. So I, I don't think it occurred to me that it would be young women that can be hit by this. Um, what should young women look for when they are going through bad periods? I've had bad periods as a kid. Um, my daughters have experienced it. It never would have crossed my mind, even me as the mom. So what, what are some of the things that you want people to know? Hey, this is the time you should come in and see someone like me. 
I, I think the idea that you can give um, give credence to their complaints about their periods and that they require some attention. So the most common thing may be that you use Tylenol and Motrin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications around the time of your period and proactively sort of engage that story. And if that works, if that gives you relief, that's that's all you need to do and that's okay. It's when those don't respond to it. Mm. So if a, if a young woman has a period and she has to stay home from school, that's obviously not okay. Mm if you try to do those basic med- medications for it, it still doesn't work, you need to take it to the next level. So I think, again, it, it, it's, a personal, it's a personal idea back and forth. And basically what we try to do is just give women the freedom to talk about it mm-hmm. and how is it impacting your life. And, each, and that's very, very different uh, woman to woman. So you got to pay attention to, is this working? It's not working. So let's now take the next step. And I guess it's hard to diagnose endometriosis. How do you diagnose it? So, so many patients that come to us have had these complaints for many years and have been doing these different medication checks. And at some point, they're a little frustrated with the situation. Uh, now, the gold standard for diagnosis is laparoscopy, surgery where you put a small camera inside the abdomen or the pelvis. Uh, with a high-definition video scope, and you can actually visualize the endometriosis lesions. And it serves two purposes. One, it confirms the diagnosis, but then you can also affect treatment and remove or excise those endometriosis lesions. So you can, wow. it's almost like two steps in one. Yes. You diagnose okay. and you treat it at the same time. Yes. And what happens when those things are not really working? Is there a fear that women will have that they could you know, lose the ability to have a baby someday. How do you allay those fears? What treatments are out there for that? So, and that's that's obviously the first thing that comes up. And, mm-hmm. and we talk about how sort of, I want to say like kind of bad news dominates what we see on the internet and what we read. Um, so people always, if they hear their daughter or their wife has endometriosis, the first thing they think is, oh, we're not going to be able to have babies. We're not going to be fertile. It's going to be awful. And I, I really try to say, that's not the majority. The majority of women do very, very well. They require engagement. They require treatment. But they, they're going to do fine. They're going to get pregnant. They're going to have kids. But they pay attention to things. They, they, they pay attention to getting their periods quieted. They pay attention to medicines around the time of their periods to sort of help alleviate the discomfort and the pain. Um, I think it's important that they begin to think about it. So we call it sort of engagement, that, that, that you pay attention to it and that you give it, uh, you, you give it some of your attention so that you're, pay, that, that you're trying to do the things to alleviate it. We should point out that you do have a new endometriosis center at Penn State Health here in Hershey. Um, You talked about surgery going in, diagnosing, doing the surgery, taking care of the problem. Is that a cure-all or can the endometriosis come back again? So endometriosis is a chronic condition. Mm. Uh, And I tell people that right from the beginning, that if if you're 20 and you have endometriosis, unfortunately, you're going to be, you still have it when you're 40 and you'll still have it later on. It will wax and wane over time. Some of that has to do with your immune system. Uh, so some women will have symptoms early in their 20s and it will ser- sort of valley and go away a little bit in their 30s. Uh, it's or- sort of up to the disease. However, overall, it's considered a chronic condition. Now, there are many things we can do to keep it quieter and keep it suppressed, and that's what we talk to people about. Um, things around childbirth, people talk about childbirth and endometriosis. Childbirth does not change, doesn't cure endometriosis. But when you're pregnant, you change your immune systems, right? So when you're pregnant, half of your pregnancy isn't you, it's, it's your partners, it's your spouse. So women that are pregnant have a, a little bit of a change in their immune system. And, and for many women, that gives them relief. So while they're pregnant, their endometriosis will seem to be quieter. Sometimes that, that change will persist for a while after pregnancy, uh, for even a few years. And so we kind of just make sure we talk about it with patients. And we, again, the biggest thing for me is that they stay actively engaged. Um, not that they want to be obsessed with it, but just paying attention to it. So two questions I have. One would be, so you're talking about the immune system. So um, one would be food. Do mm-hmm. certain foods play a role? And two, what just came to my mind was thinking about when my daughters have had bad periods and even myself, my quick fix was birth control. So how do both of those yep. things play a role in the, in the treatment? Two great questions. So for, let's talk about the most common issue is suppression of menses. So birth control pills for suppression of menses. So the way I talk about it is non-contraceptive benefits of birth control pills. So for young women, there's a reason to be on birth control pill as medicine to suppress menses. It's very healthy and it decreases inflammation. It can decrease pain. 
So that's absolutely part of the story. Diet is a huge part of this discussion. Abdominal inflammation gives you pain. And that comes from even people that have inflammatory bowel disease, uh, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, IBS. Those women share the same symptoms that endometriosis patients have as well. We talk a lot about what's called the paleo diet. And mm. the paleo diet really comes from the inflammatory bowel disease literature, but it works for endometriosis patients. And the paleo diet is really more of a lifestyle of healthy eating. It's very close to the Mediterranean diet. It's not purely vegetarian because there are some vegetables that are pro-inflammatory. Uh, so I have patients look at the paleo diet and as much as they can adopt it into their life, it's helpful for them. It's also very good for your glycemic index. So women tend to lose weight, which is a, a great benefit of that. And I think having a healthy diet, weight loss, it benefits them. They all say they feel better. In all honesty, it's about control. Mm -hmm. Not every woman can stay with paleo, mm -hmm. but when they know what it is they eat that make that works, I think they approach the situation better and they say they feel better about it. So knowing you can make that improvement with diet goes a long way to helping the, the woman also take control of the situation. That's great. Yes, we do know that advice. March is Endometriosis Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And again, as we mentioned, you do have a new endometriosis center at Penn State Health. If people want more information, how can they get in touch with you and get more information? So the website, pennstatehealth.org uh, slash endometriosis center. Uh, there'll also be a contact phone number, 717-531-3503 is the Women's Health Clinic and the Endometriosis Center Clinic. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Great information. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful. I guess the bottom line here is two things we want to emphasize. Women, if you're having pain, speak up. Don't mm -hmm. dismiss it. Uh, and make sure you find a doctor who is going to listen to you. Um, because you don't have to live like this. No, no, you absolutely don't. This was encouraging to hear because it sounds like there are a lot of things that women can do to sort of stave off um, having this pain forever, but it's really great to have a doctor yes. who has the wherewithal to sit and really listen and really hear what the patient needs. So that's good. That's the key. Yeah. And you learned something too. I did. With three girls at home, now you know. I guess I do know. Now you know. <laughs> I wish I had a little earlier knowing this before, but that's okay. I've that's got the okay. Info now. Better late than never. You got it. Exactly. Right. Of course, we are all over social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn. You can find our podcast all over the place. All over the place. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because then on Mondays, you're going to find out that Chick to Chick has a new podcast. So and you're going to get that little blip. That's right. We're the back. little chirp. Wouldn't it be great if it was a chirp? It, we should. We should go we'll chirp, chirp every exactly. Monday. Well, until then, we hope you tune in to the next Chick to Chick.